basic bitch is an American term used to describe someone who thinks they are special, quirky, unique and or insightful when in fact they are boring and typical. They follow popular trends, jump on bandwagons and wear the same kinds of clothes as everybody else, all the while acting like they are being cool and original. Other cultures have similar words and phrases, I have heard Canadians use the term tool to describe the same kind of thing. Whatever the name though, I think certain game pundits, critics, journalists, YouTubers or whatever title you want to give these professional opinion havers could be described as the basic bitches of gaming opinions. I am talking the likes of Downward Thrust, Clean Prince Gaming, Extra Credits, Skill Up and various others. What makes these guys basic bitches is that their opinions are not original, insightful or even well argued or presented. There is nothing to learn from them that you couldn't get by skimming the headlines on IGN or reading the top few comments on any game related subreddit. What's that? You don't like loot boxes? Wow what an original and absolutely not mundane opinion you have there. Vanilla Destiny was light on content you say? Nobody's ever said that before. You predicted that Nier Automata would be a surprise hit? That would have been a powerful prediction if you weren't clearly jumping on the bandwagon after the game was a surprise hit. If you hadn't guessed by my sarcasm, their opinions are, more often than not, simple repeats of common or popular opinions on the internet or otherwise so obvious as to be virtually worthless. Now an opinion doesn't have to be original if it's well presented, it could be well argued, entertaining or generally well constructed. But basic bitches opinions are rarely any of these things, if anything they are often presented badly as they are rarely more than a quick surface level overview. Say what you will about the likes of B Dobbins and Razor Fist, I am not exactly a fan myself but I don't see anyone else arguing that AAA publishers keep trying to appeal to a wider audience because they have hit a cap on the number of hardcore gamers they can appeal to. And Razor Fist's downfall of games journalism series is arguably the definitive argument as to the decline of the games press. But even when basic bitches do have an opinion, they lack the spine to stand by that opinion. Filling whatever rants with disclaimers, apologies, walkbacks and generally trying to avoid rocking the boat. This is most apparent in scandals and controversies. A controversy is, well controversial, for one of two reasons. 1. The event in question exists in a moral grey area where there is lots of room for nuance and opinions could easily go either way. Whereas reason number two is a simple case of truth versus lies with one person or group having some reason to lie or cover it up. A great example of this would be the recent Guild Wars 2 firing scandal. It's pretty clear cut, a YouTuber gave his opinion on the story of a game on social media, the writer and a friend flipped out attacking the YouTuber and accusing them of sexism, so said writer and a friend were fired. The only people that seem to be on the writer's side either don't know what's going on or have a reason to spin this as somehow unjust. The only real grey area is that people shouldn't be fired for what they see on personal social media, but even then the argument can be made that she was addressing feedback as a representative of the company when she expanded the ask me anything to her Twitter. I bring this stuff up about controversy because basic bitch pundits rarely if ever take a side, again attempting to avoid offence by taking the middle of the road golden mean approach to controversies, with titles, thumbnails or conclusions that almost always end in a question mark. This practice can work for type 1 controversies where there is enough grey area to come across as a moderate voice of reason, but this falls apart in type 2 controversies where there is no middle ground to be had, or very little. To bring it back to the Guild Wars example, should the writer still work for the company or not? You can't really say she should half work for the company because that's kind of silly given the context. This doesn't just apply to controversy but any opinion where people take a side. For example when Skillup was so insulted by the shockingly low quality of one of the Destiny 2 expansions, he went on Twitter and basically told the developers to go fuck themselves. That had the potential to be a powerful message. This wasn't some nobody shit poster or some hater looking for clicks, this was a major YouTuber who would made a living covering the game, telling the devs that this was unacceptable. Unfortunately he followed that tweet with a video review that was full of apologies and qualifiers.
Earlier this week, I put out a tweet that said this. I am beyond disgusted that Bungie would gate heroic strikes behind DLC Paywall, a feature we've enjoyed for three years, removed and now reintroduced at a price. I said in my Destiny 2 review that Bungie were my team and I'd stand by them. Not anymore. Fuck these guys. So I want to begin by apologizing for that tweet. I stand by the intent behind that tweet, but I do regret the language that I used. I try to be professional, but I'm not perfect, and here I let my emotions get the better of me for reasons I'm going to explain during the course of this review. If we're serious about having a dialogue with developers and publishers about the games that we love, it can't be in the way that I displayed here, so I apologize. I get why I did this. If you tell greedy corporations to go fuck themselves, then you don't get invited to have breakfast with the developers, or you don't get to go to behind closed doors previews. But I'd argue that truth and honesty are more important to your viewers than whether or not you get a preview code. I'd argue that those viewers are more important to please than some PR department. If Activision and Bungie care so much about their reputation, then why did they demand money for an expansion that was so bad that fans considered it to be an insult? Why did they stuff their game full of loot boxes and then throttle XP to try and push people into buying them? These YouTubers seem to forget that they built their channel up without needing privileged access promised by these companies, but then seem to think that they will be ruined if they lose that access. Now I'm sympathetic to the idea that politeness and mutual respect is required if YouTubers are serious about wanting devs to be more public and open about what they do, but there are times where that's reasonable and times where it isn't. This really becomes obvious when you realise that they don't pull any punches in the video titles and thumbnails, only to have the rant itself be vague and wishy-washy. You ever noticed how game pundits often seem to have missed their true calling as game designers, writers and publishers? They always know how best to run a business, how to best design a game and how to best write the story for any given game. But the truth of the matter is that they aren't expert game designers. They know some jargon that their audience has likely heard before that they can throw around to sound smart and insightful without really seeing much of anything. Sure, it sounds good to talk about risk rewards, skinner boxes, loot economy, gameplay loop, skill ceiling, time to kill or player power fantasy, but these don't really mean much without context to put them in. Even if they do have a good idea about what they're talking about, there's the question of implementation. It's easy to say, balance the game, but actually doing that often isn't as simple as buffing X and nerfing Y. The same goes for better level design or better PvP or be more like this game and various other fixes that they make sound quick and easy. One claim I've seen multiple times is that games need to think of new ideas or that publishers need to take risks, but said pundits are hesitant to say what these new ideas and risks should be. Instead, they resort to the same behaviour they just condemned, throwing out lazy like X but Y mashups of their favourite games. But there's one place where basic bitch game pundits are at their most basic and that's with art games and analysis. They won't try and analyse games that are obscure, complex or gameplay focused. You won't see a video from these basic bitches explaining the lore and artistry of games like Armored Core or Front Mission. No, they go for either current popular games such as Undertale, Dark Souls, Five Nights at Freddy's and Warframe, or they go for the lowest hanging fruit. That usually means pretentious naval gazing walking simulators like Gone Home or What Remains of Edith Finch. They are easy to do an analysis of because they are so vague that almost anything you say will fit, or their so called deeper meaning is so blatant and obvious that you'd have to be an idiot to miss it. But if that's too much work, there's always the third option. Take games like Silent Hill 2, Spec Ops The Line and Bioshock. These games have been mind of meaning already, and there's so many fan theories and explanations that it's easy to copy and paste one from some forum, wiki or lesser known YouTuber and claim it as your own. One thing I've seen outside of YouTube is people who have no knowledge or interest of Game X, Studio Y or whatever Z, then once something becomes popular, try and claim that they have been lifelong fans of X, Y and or Z. 
It's a transparent attempt to avoid looking like they're jumping on a bandwagon, and that gets even more obvious when their entire knowledge of said thing in question amounts to what can be learned by skimming Wikipedia. It's strange because in my opinion there's nothing really wrong with coming into a series as it becomes popular, I don't see the need to lie about it. As you've likely figured out by now, this applies to basic bitch gaming pundits as well. I find it strange and sometimes a little funny when they jump on some recent bandwagon and then try to act as if they've been there all along. I don't mean to pick on Skillup, but his Nia Automata review is a great example. He said that he initially dismissed the game because it looked like some dumb anime hack and slash starring a dominatrix. He then goes on to call the game a masterpiece. The problem is that the thumbnail and the review said the masterpiece that you won't play, despite the review coming out after the game was a surprise hit. He even mentions how well received the game was in the video. While I can't find any concrete numbers, I think it's reasonable to assume that the game sold close to a million by the time his review came out. These gaming pundits have certain formats that start to basically become catchphrases. From titles like, this game didn't just die, it was murdered, to ending videos with some variant of, this is a start of a discussion, let me know what you think down in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe and support my Patreon, it keeps my content unbiased and supports independent creators. Like most things so far, this is not a problem on its own, formats can be good, I frequently don't know how to end a video so I often just end it by saying thanks for watching, bye. Where it becomes a problem is when the format itself starts to become a substitute for thought, and once you see it, you can't not see it. The best example is Clean Prince Gaming, where he'll drop the background music to deliver a point that's meant to be serious or shocking. But it's so overused that it's more jarring than anything else. Other times the format gets in the way of the message. Jim Sterling fills his videos with profanity, gross out humour, and supposedly ironic self-aggrandisement, waving a dildo bat around while shouting about how his detractors are immature jizz cretins or some such, but then he turns around and demands that GM should be censored if he thinks they are impure taste. And as shown earlier, Skillup's mild-mannered presentation sometimes gets in the way when it comes time to condemn games for their faults or to criticise corporate greed. Oddly enough, this exact inoffensive toothless, formulaic opinionating might also explain their popularity. Taking a side in an argument means potentially alienating the other side. By walking the line, you don't piss off one side or the other, though as explained earlier there will come a time where that simply won't work. I also think a large part of it comes down to simple scheduling. You might have lots of opinions right now, lots of things you want to rant about, but that quickly dries up when you have to put out a 10-15 to 15 minute rant every week and since they don't want to rock the board and don't have much time to do a lot of research, this leads to them devolving into repeating the most basic and clean cut opinions. While I don't know these guys personally and I don't want to judge them too harshly, I get the impression that the bulk of their research involves skimming forums, social media and gaming news sites. This would explain so much about why their commentary is often shallow and surface level and why said opinions rarely drift far from the general consensus. Now just to be clear, this isn't a condemnation of these people directly, they are probably fine people in real life, and their shows aren't always bad, hell they might even make good points on occasion, but those occasions are few and far between. Their shows make a good first impression, but once you scratch the surface, you realise there's little of substance behind the advertiser friendly voices and clickbait headlines. I'm under no delusions, I don't think this rant will achieve much of anything. They'll keep appearing in my recommendations, they'll keep being cited as authorities on subjects like game design, despite having never made a game and knowing little except for a handful of buzzwords. They offer no unique insight in the process of making games, their opinions are bland, safe, unoriginal and argued in the most inoffensive way possible. They are the basic bitches of gaming opinions.